So, hi everyone, bonsoir. That's the only word who I know in French, and I think I also misspelled the stuff. Uh, I'm Ignacio Navarro. Uh, it's my first time here, so I'm so excited to be here in the Hague. I really enjoyed the conference for the last day and today. As I say, Ignacio Navarro, I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. I don't want to make any jokes about football because I'm, I'm not into that stuff, so sorry. <laughs> I'm working like application security, and also I do some medical hacking stuff uh, over there. I mean, when I get bored, I just like to hack some stuff I found in Shudan and that stuff. Uh, that's my Twitter. If you have any question, uh, you, maybe we have time for later, but in case you can do, I will be over there on the war games and that. So, as a fun fact, I really like sneakers, and also I made some clothes. I have my sewing machine, and I do all the stuff. It's just uh, so important topic for today. Uh, what are you going to see today? A little introduction, how I found the system, uh, a little data about the company owner of that system who they provide. Uh, we're going to show you some idols and broken authorizations, a little story about the Android application, account takeover, race conditions. They have a website for book the different stores like an arcade or amusement park for birthdays or office stuff. Some say service that I found in Shudan or just for DNS. And a little bit about NFC and the conclusions, obviously. But first of all, this shit is not working, so. Disclaimer. Maybe some techniques and procedures that you're going to see are not completely legal, so don't do this one at your home. And if you do that, Take care. I mean, if you, if you found something, report that shit immediately to the company and that. Don't be an asshole just defacing website or something. In Argentina, we have some stories like the last month about some people were defacing websites for the public universities or libraries and that. So just don't be an asshole. So now we can start. I divide the talk in 10 different stages, like the games. The first one is the introduction. So. Uh, the last December, I went to Sao Paulo, Brazil, to spoke at the Hacker to Hackers conference. That was a really nice one, so technical, uh, and the talks were really, really nice. But the organizer, shout out to Rodrigo and all the people, uh, they really like the party. So you have party from Friday to Sunday over there, and they bring you to different places to l listen a little bit more the Brazilian music, like funk and that. So that's so fucking nice. And in one of those parties, I met a girl from Brazil. And the next day, we went on a date into Mallard, into some bar over there. We get some beers and that. And there was a mall arcade. So I say, OK, let's go into the stuff. And we found an arcade place. When we, when we enter into that stuff, I found a totem machine for buy the car, recharge them, check your money. And that was running an old version of Windows. So I was standing in front of the machine for like two minutes, like, OK, this one is so interesting. Maybe there is something into the stuff. We bought the, the car. That was just a car. There's no more data or something like that. But we have the name of the company. So I say, OK, when I come back to Argentina, I want to check this shit. I run a little GoBuster over there. Uh, and there was not so much stuff. There was just a PHP website who was running Drupal. And also, they have spoke the info.php. They were running a really old version of PHP, like from 2019. And I found a so interesting Richard from Red Moore from the 2011. And they, they already have the file uploads file upload on. So if you have a LFI, you can maybe get some RSC for that way because they save the file in the temp folder and that. But we don't need we don't have LFI right now, so we need to continue research and research. I run a little DNS search with DNSX. There's a QR code for the GitHub stuff. And I found another website uh, called plus dot the website. And that was just the website for check your, your salary, uh, check where you play, charge some money and that. So I was exploiting this stuff for like two weeks, and I didn't find anything over there, anything. It's because you can check all the stuff, and that's fine, but they were using a middleware over there. So if you want to try to do some injections, like SQLA or something, that didn't work because 
That was a middleware over there. So after two weeks, I say, damn, there is nothing to do here. There is no talk this year about having summer case. And then I grab the car and then turn them and read a little bit of the, the, the behind of those. And there was some URL for another company. Uh, I Google it, I enter that web page, and that was an Argentinian company, and say, hey, we are providing cashless system for more than seven countries, more than 2,000 customers. Uh, you can earn a lot of money with this and blah, blah, blah. We don't just have arcade, we have amusement park, bowling, skate park. So that was so interesting. I continued reading a little bit more into the web tab, and they have the image with all the clients. Uh, you have the, the countries and that. And there was more than 70 countries. And say, at, that, at that moment, I didn't follow anything. But they say, yeah, I want to try to get into this shit right now. So I continued reading like, a little more. I go around uh, DNS stuff, and I found the API documentation, uh, the version 2. And they say, OK, for authenticate, you need the API key and the API secret. So when we try to do some, uh, some stuff over the API, we, we get the response with 200 code. But in the generation, we have a status success. But the success is false. And the status code is 403. And access denied. So that was fine, but we need the API key and the API secret. We need to start to get more into that in, in deep of that stuff. But what happened if we delete the version number two? If the API was building with some secure techniques and that, that didn't work. But in this case, when we delete the version number two, we can consume that API without any token or something or <laughs> something. So in this case, we, we can get access to all the location who they have with the address, the phone, the the, the Google link for that. And I run a, little, a lot of go buster over that API. And we get all the endpoints, some of them with 200 OK with the data, but some, some, some of them didn't have the data, and a lot of 400. And the body for the JSON stuff was the same one, like status success or status quo. So now we can get more into the IDORs and program authorizations. What is an IDOR is basically when you try to get access to different objects from the API. And maybe that's not your, your object, object, but you can get access to that stuff. I tried the first one with the car. I check my car without any token and say, OK, this one is your car. You have your money, your bonus points, and that. But when I try to ask for another different one, that gave me the data too. So if that happened with the car, that happened with the customers. So I check the customer number one and I say, OK, this one is your name, this one is your first name, your last name, this one is your phone, this one is your picture. And those are all the cards that you have attached to your account. So you can get a lot of data from the, the different customers. And also, the ID was a sequential number. So you can start to check the one, the number two, the number three. And you can just wrote like a normal Python script for that one. Uh, I, that was, I was that guy after I found this shitty vulnerabilities into the web server. And I wrote a little Python script for check which customer have money into the account and which one is the number of the car. Because for the number of customer, it's fine, but they have the management cars, the master cards for that with unlimited charge, unlimited money, and you can play a lot into their case. So. There was 2,000 installation with the same shit. Yes. I came back to the website, and I started to read a little bit more because they have a news page. And they say, OK, we are in Brazil. We have a lot of arcade bar stuff in Brazil. We are in, in Prague. We are in Saudi Arabia, Spain, uh, UK. But also, there was another one so interesting. I need a little bit, I need beer, sorry. There was another one more interesting because there is an amusement park, um, roller coaster, and arcade stuff in Vegas, close to the, where is the DEF CON right now? Uh, and they are running the same shit, so you can use arcade and the amusement park with the same stuff. So that was fine, we have that, that API, but I say, okay, maybe we need to get more data. I start to check the different endpoints. 
And one of them say, okay, you can get access from the web page, but also you can get access for the Android for the mobile application. I check in my Apple Store and I didn't find anything because I don't know. So I came to the typical place for, for stuff like APK, Combo APK Pure, Pure or Pure, I don't know. And they have all the list of the clients with all the application from the different customers from US, Brazil, UK, and that. So I just get one of those applications. I don't load that one. I don't know that one. And I just decompile them with APK tool or Java decompilers if you, if you don't want to download that something. And we can get the code that was on a obfuscated code, so we can check all the different strings and that. Uh, that was in, G in G JS. And that was like in a something weird. So it's, we need a, a predefined for this. In this case, I just, just use uh, JS Beautifier. So after that one, we can start to filter. In this case, I just filter for the API key, the API secret, the bookings URLs, and the endpoint. And we can, get all, we can get all of that data because that was unobfuscated. So I get, another, I get more applications just to check if they are the same one. And yeah, they, are, they were consumed the same endpoint, the same API, but that changed into the API key, the API secret, and the account code. So the endpoint is the same one, but with the, the account code who was a header, just, they just attach into the stuff. With that account code on the endpoint, you can make a reference to the company. But also, the, the account code was an XSML for like a 13 characters, so that, that would be kind of complicated to guess which one is each company. But we have the list of all the clients. Uh, we, can, we have Google, fortunately. So we can just Google it and don't use that stuff. Just what I'm trying to say in this case. If you wanted to consume the API, the main API, with the account code with that say, OK, this one is the amusement park from Ecuador. But if we just go to the customer list and search that amusement park, uh, we have that API from that amusement park, and we just need so many account code or something. We, we, we can just consume that directly from the main server, from the main API. There was an endpoint for charge some credit into your car. In this case, we need to generate the authentication token. And they use the API key and the API secret. We have that one from the application. And they encode that in SHA-1. And after that one, they encode again into SHA-1. That was a little bit weird. But once we have the token, we just need to send the, the request with the API key, the API secret, encoded, and that token too. So that's more weird than, than other stuff. We check the different offers that they bring you to us. And we have in this case, OK, you can charge $200 and blah, blah, blah. You, can, you are going to get this bonus and that. Uh, you, this one is the body if you want to try. And also, if you want to do some automatic recharge for your car, you can just set the, the, the parameter delivered through. And we are going to do all that shit. Obviously, in this case, I, I didn't need it because $200, a little in Argentina, is a lot of money. And I don't want to be in jail for that stuff. So we, ca we can just show that, and that's fine. About the endpoint, into the application, they have more than 30 endpoints, all of them in plain test. And also, we have the parameter who they use, or the body, in the case of the JSON stuff. In this case, there was an update customer. And let's say, OK, this one is a JSON stuff, it's a post. We send the authorization header with the token, but we didn't validate that one. But we just send it. Uh, in this case, we have the body, and, was, uh, and that was the first name, the last name, the email, and the newsletter. That was just a random Boolean for get some spam in your email account. But the email stuff make me, I, I say, OK, and maybe I need to pour more, att more attention in this shit. So I say, OK, let's go to do some account cover over this one. So I, get, I send a uh, get request to my account, and, and that say, OK, this one is your ID, and this one is your email. And then I send a post request to change the email, the, the, the email stuff 
just for a random one in this gate full test, and that changes without any token or something. So I say, okay, I don't get any notification about it. Maybe I can change another account. So I I did a little demo recorded. So I get I have my account. I'm so bad at editing videos, by the way. So this video could be more fast, but I I download the video editor for macOS. So we had access to we we enter into our, our, our account. We have that email for test. But in this case, we're going to use a webhook stuff. We change the email. We, we send that one. And now we, we are going to go to recover that password. And the user is never a notification about, OK, hey, your password was changed. Uh, coming back for the editing video, each blue block, I need to save the video, export that, and get the new, the new project for that shit, import the stuff again. So that takes me like a two hours for the entire stuff. And I forgot to put the, the fast feed camera. But now we are going to go to reset the password because we already changed it. We set the new password, like one, two, three, four. There was no uh, policy uh, for the password or something. This could be faster. So we can get access to the different account. In this, in this case, it was mine, but we can do this one for the old account for the company, for the master accounts, too. And we can get access to that stuff. About the risk condition, uh, it's when you try to access at the same object at the same time. It's not the same, but it's almost close to that one. Uh, and there's some uh, really good uh, trainings from Portswigger, from Barb stuff. And that one is a QR code if you want to try later. Um, so in this case, they offer uh, different bonuses or something like, OK, you install the application. We are going to give you 500 points on that. Uh, I wrote a little Python script, a normal one. There is uh, so different techniques for, uh, for exploit the RSA. So some of them are so complicated and that. In this case, it was just a normal stuff who send in some random post. Uh, so I sent that one to get that bonuses. And that hits six times in 100 uh, threads. We check history. We get all those points into our account. And that's fine, because it's just points. So we can reward that for teddy bears or something. But there was another reward in US about, OK, you can, you can get the reward for $100, $500. Obviously, I didn't do this shit again, because I don't want to be in jail. But when I continue reading a little bit more the the application, the Android application, they have a something like that to say, OK, online booking. OK, let's see what's, what is this stuff. I run a little GoBuster 2, and I found a lot of public folders. In this case, the most important was the temp uploads and data. In the temp, they have some XML logs. You have some IPs, some ports, some data about the cashier in the different stuff. And the most important stuff, I think, was the XML logs, when you can see the different variables and that. But it's not so much a confidential data. I mean, it's confidential, but not at the big level. About the uploads, I wrote a little Python script, too, just because they have a lot of pictures. And that's not so interesting. So I wrote a little uh, Python script to, to say, hey, maybe this one could be uh, something fun. And in this case, they found three folders uh, called Facturación Argentina. And that's mean invoices Argentina. So I went to that folders, and they have two certificates. Uh, they use those certificates for say, hey, I'm the company XYZ. Uh, you can generate invoice at my name, and I'm validating this shit. So you can get a lot of stuff about it. But also, if they have those certificates, they save the invoices somewhere. In this case, they save the invoice in the data folder. So you can get access to more than 600, 800 invoices from Argentina with all the customer data, data where they live, how they pay, which, which car, or in cash. And that was some interesting stuff, too. About the booking manager, I mean, you can do the booking, but you need something to manage that stuff. 
Uh, in this case, they have the, this website was exposed to, and they say, okay, you can search your reservation by your number or your, your last name, but if you don't put some, anything into the search box and just click that stuff, you can get access to all the bookings into the website. Uh, in this case, are from March when I wrote the, the slides. And you can get access to all the customers, the data, how many people, how they pay. They have a lot of different errors into the application, like they have some SQL A too. Um, as I say, you can manage all the stuff. And also, you can put some negative tips, and that's rest from your main stuff. Uh, that's something weird too. Uh, about the same server, as I, as, I, as I said at the beginning, I, when, when I'm bored on weekends, I open shoot and I start to search something. So in this case, I just uh, search the name of the company in Shudan or the different sub subdomains. And I found the, they have the Sendex public, so you can create your own account without any validation. You can get access to all the Sendex stuff, like videos, some pictures, some how, they, how you can create the different requests and that. But into the videos, they have a lot of credentials exposed, email exposed, like API key, API secrets, ports, endpoint, password, users. So you can get some stuff about it. And also they have some network diagrams, so you can see, okay, this arcade have this endpoint, this one is the are the nuts and that. And that's so important information, you want to do something inside. Also they have a go-karting in the US, and they have the administration panel exposed without any firewall or something. And also, they have the webpack exposed, so you can see all the different endpoints. In this case, they were exposed in the API, and you can check the user, the first name, the last name, and, I, and also, I think, was the phone too. Uh, all of them without token or something. Ah, no, and also, you can get access to the screens, like uh, at the go carding screen, like I say, the screen who, you, who they show in the, um, in the stuff, in the local. So that's something weird too. About Spain, this, Spain is the, the, one of the clients in Europe where they have more clients there. And there's a really rich amusement park over there. And they expose the console for each of those amusement park. They have a login page, it's just the login stuff, but that was a really complicated to do some SQLI or something and that didn't work. But I started to read the code and they already exposed the webpack too. So you can read the entire code for the APIs and that. Uh, in this case, they have one for check the different machine into the place. So you can get all the data, how the status and that. But the most important thing is you have the public API for those machines. So maybe you can do some other different attacks. Um, there was another endpoint. Uh, I don't want to go in deep in that one, but there was an endpoint where you can reset the machine. And if you reset an arcade, it's fine. The people are going to lose the, the match and that. But if you're resetting the, amusement, the roller coaster, it's kind of complicated shit. Uh, I continue reading the, that code, and the, they have all the users and the login stuff. And the first moment was the normal one. They, they still having the same structure for the JSON. So if you get a 200 and the status quo is success and other stuff, it's fine. Just give me the token and that's it. But if you get a 400, uh, 407, do something. But if this one is 420, do another stuff. At the beginning, I thought he was talking about with, but no. When you send the, four, the 420 token, the 420 status quo, that redirects you to another website, and that say, OK, please set the new password for this user without any token or something, so you can just chunk all the password from that website from the administration panel. And we are coming back for the same stuff, and that shit. About the NFC, what about the time? We have 20, OK. About the NFC, I don't want to go in deep into, into the stuff, because that card don't have a lot of data. But if you want to get into the stuff, there was a really interesting article from Chema Alonso in LLMal.com. That one is a secure code. Uh, in my case, I just used the car and the flipper zero. And uh, when you read that, you have some data. Okay, 
you have the manufacturer, the UID. In this, in this case, it was a MyFair Classic. And basically, you have a 16 uh, sector with four blocks each, and one of them is just for the keys. So I read that car and was almost empty. The key was by default and just FFF. And uh, when you get that, there was the checkdown number one, well, the number two, uh, with some data, and that data was the number of the car, so you can just change it, and that's fine. But that's it. But I presented this talk in Spain two weeks ago, and after the, talk, after the talk, one guy came to me and said, hey, I went to a amusement park here, close to here with my, with my son last week, and I have the car here. Uh, you want to read it? And I said, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and in this case, the Spain case was the same one. So they just have some numbers over there, and basically they have the same vulnerabilities than the normal cards. So you can just change the name. There is no validation about hash or something. Uh, and I suppose to do this stuff in all different countries where I present the talk. But after I saw that, I say, meh, it's fun. It's the same. So I came back to the application, and I started to read a little bit, a little bit more in deep. And they have this line who say, OK, this one was the Android application. And that say, OK, if this one is not the iOS, that was weird too. Uh, and they have the NFC stuff on, do something. So I say, OK, let's see. I ask my dad for the phone. And I log it in into my account to check, OK, let's see this new feature. And when you log it in the, into the application, they don't have any two-factor or something, obviously. And you go to the play car stuff. You can emulate the car with your phone. So you can just log it in into the random account and just use your phone for emulate the car, and you don't need a flipper zero or something like that. So for the ending, uh, what we can do, basically, we, we can get access to all the different accounts from the customer, from the bookings, or from the cars directly. We can access and emulate all the cars. We can charge some money and earn some prices over there. And about France, fortunately, there's no client here, or fortunately for you. But about Europe, you have a lot of stuff. I mean, if you want to go just close to here in Spain, you can get some fun over there. About Turkey, Netherlands, they have a lot of clients too. Uh, there is a really big amusement park in Spain, in Germany. So you can just travel a little bit. The flights here are so cheap, thanks Ryanair. Uh, about the conclusions. The zero days are so fucking fun, but we still have some basic vulnerability into the whole system, like they don't validate tokens, or you have some LFI over there. So if you are starting into the web application and the hacking stuff, that could be a really nice way. The, Dev the DevSecOps culture can help a lot to the different companies and that to try to fix the different vulnerabilities at the development stage, and you need to wait to, to the application will be in production to fix it. Security education and training, like the, the stuff who all, 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 always say. So, the normally. And I found this one in March, April. So I reported this one several times, and no one paid attention about that shit. But in April, I sent another email to the marketing people because the marketing people are more into mails and that. And they say, yeah, sure, thank you, thank you for saying that, and blah, blah, blah. And I had a meeting with a CTO in Colombia, in Bogota. And he said, OK, let's do Let's work together. Let's fix it. Sure, blah, blah, blah. So I wrote the report. I sent them. And I sent the report like three weeks ago, I think. And no one answered. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. I mean, I still send in some email. Hey, at least you, did you see the report? Because. I'm into the conference, and the people here, I don't know. So if you found something, please report that shit immediately. Don't be an asshole. And if someone sends you some report, pay some attention. Just answer the email. Say, hey, thank you for spending your time doing this shit. We are not talking about the money, just an answer. Last year, I spoke about some a ESP in Argentina, an uh, internet service provider. And after like 20 emails, they fix it. But they never answer. So I say, OK, at least, at least you fix it. 
And that's all. So thank you so much. If you have any question, that's it. If you are too shy, you can ask later. But when I go, when I when I will be walking over there, you need you just need to bring me a beer for the questions. So. Oh, there's one. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, it's uh, very funny to find um, vulnerabilities so easy like this uh, in 2024. Uh, why do you think that is the case and why in this uh, industry in particular? And do you think there's specific industries where you can still find vulnerabilities like this? Yeah, I think that maybe here in Europe they have more improvement into, into that way, but in Argentina or South America, we still have some shitty stuff and no one pay attention because if the work is running, we don't want to spend some money to fix it. I mean, if the stuff is okay, it's fine. Please stand. Hola, Ignacio. Gracias. Did you just exploit that or just report it? Sorry? Exploited? Did you exploit it or just report it to the client? Both. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I report that. At the, at the first moment, I report that stuff before all the big shit. And now there is more stuff about the talk, but this more risky stuff. So I'm going to go to present this talk in Vegas at the Sky Talks, and I'm going to go in deep for other vulnerabilities. But at the first moment, when I report the stuff, uh, the, the CTO say, OK, thanks for reporting the shit. And that would be so nice if you say on the talk that we are working together to fix it. So at least I have that word. I mean, eh, creo que es posible de encontrar el, el cliente, o sea, el, el sitio. Yeah. Le dejaste nombres de, de, de file. No. Sí. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 no, at least I check everything twice, so okay. maybe there is something over there, and that's like the bonus track for you guys. Hello, uh, thank you for your presentation. I'm here. <laughs> thank um, I'm just curious, at one moment you were presenting uh, the, the, the view of the kiosk, or at least the links in the admin dashboard where you could access to any uh, uh, kiosk uh, screen. Mm -hmm. And is it just screen sharing? Is it uh, just uh, uh, an example of the, of the firmware and the screen that is running on the, on the device? And were you able also to, to modify it, alter it? Uh, I don't know if you see someone doing using it or not. I did not understand the well this part. Thing. <laughs> that was a really long question, so I don't know if I get the entire stuff, but I mean, it was a remote screen. You were able to see what was happening on the real device. No, no, I, I didn't. Wear, I went once on site for check the stuff. And I drove like a five hours with my dad and my and my brother. And when we arrived at the place, they were not using the same system. So I say, oh, fuck, after all this shit, there's not, nothing to do. But no, I never checked the, like, into the real, like, reset the stuff in the place, for example. 
but they, they changed the cars, charge money and that, yeah, that's, that was working. Okay. Well, thank you. Let's see. Okay, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ignacio Navarro.